In this video, we will demonstrate how to conduct a gene knockout experiment with CRISPR or Cas9 in HEK293 adherent cells using Invitrogen Lipofectamine CRISPR-Max transfection reagent. The first step is to design the experiment and order the required reagents via the free Invitrogen True Design Genome Editor software. For today's experiment, we're selecting Gene Knockout. Selecting the species of cells, in this case human, and then searching for our gene of interest, in this case HPRT. Next, you will pick the transcript of your gene you wish to target. You then need to select the type of knockout edit you wish to perform. Today, we will use Frameshift Indels. True Design gives you the option to use pre-designed gRNAs that will target the first exon of a gene or custom gRNAs that require you to use the gene navigator to select the specific nucleotide site you wish to target. Today, we will use pre-designed synthetic gRNAs. Clicking Next initiates TrueDesign's algorithm, which will scan the desired edit site region for all photospacer adjacent motifs, or PAM, sequences. It will then rank the recommended gRNAs for performance and specificity and filter out those with poor off-target prediction. If the site you are targeting lacks a PAM for CRISPR, TrueDesign will design talons to target the desired edit site. Clicking the off-target number gives you a list of the possible off-target editing sites. However, just because an off-target is listed, it does not guarantee the edit will occur, especially if your gRNA has a high performance score. Overall, a gRNA with a high score and a low off-target number is ideal. True Design will add green check marks to the top gRNAs it has identified. We recommend trying two or three gRNAs for each new gene target you're editing. Clicking on each gRNA will show you where it lines up within the site of interest. With the PAM site highlighted in the purple box, simply select the gRNAs you wish to use via the checkboxes. Clicking Next will take you to a summary page of the reagents you will need for your experiment. Simply select or deselect what you need via the checkboxes and use the drop-down menus to choose the amounts. Lastly, the software includes the option to add positive and negative controlled gRNAs for your experiment. These verified gRNAs are great for optimizing your experiments for a new cell type. For today's experiment, we will need gRNAs TrueCut Cas9 Protein V2, CRISPR Max, GCD primers, positive negative control gRNAs, and a GCD kit. Click the Download Designs and Protocols button for a summary document of everything needed for your experiment. Then click the Add to Cart button and all selected reagents will be ready for ordering. Once your reagents arrive in the lab, unbox them immediately and store them according to the package labelling. To start your knockout experiment, cells must be properly cultured, counted and seeded to ensure a consistent and healthy cell population is ready for transfection. Plate your cells so they are approximately 30 to 70% confluent on the day of transfection, with three replicate wells for each control and gRNA to ensure for enough cells for downstream analysis. For this experiment, we will use a 24 well plate, plating 40,000 to 90,000 cells per well in a 0.5 milliliter complete medium. On the day of transfection, first check your cell health and for signs of contamination before proceeding. Once your cells are deemed healthy, a new gRNA needs to be resuspended in TE buffer to a concentration of 100 micromoles and stored at minus 20 degrees C. For each gRNA, prepare one RNA's free microcentrifuge tube with gRNA TrueCut Cas9 protein, Cas9 Plus reagent, and OptiMem medium. We recommend mixing Cas9 protein and gRNA at a one-to-one -one ratio and make sure to add the Cas9 Plus reagent to the tube last. 
Set these tubes aside at room temperature while you prepare a second corresponding tube for each gRNA. For the second tubes, dilute the CRISPR-Max reagent in Optimum and incubate at room temperature for one minute, and no more than five minutes. Then mix tubes one and two for each corresponding gRNA and incubate for 10 to 15 minutes at room temperature. While transfection reagents are incubating, you can optionally refresh the media on your cells to the final volume suggested in the TrueCut Cas9 Protein User Guide. For our 24 well plate, the volume of media will be 0.5 milliliters. After incubation, add the contents of each tube to its corresponding well of cells and place the cells back into the incubator until the next day. At 24 and 72 hours post-transfection, cells should be assessed for toxicity. Key things to look out for include cell stress, death, and contamination. If cells look stressed, refreshing the media can help them to recover. Once the cells have been deemed healthy at 72 hours post-transfection, genomic cleavage detection, or GCD, can be performed to measure editing efficiency for each gRNA tested. First, collect the cells and split the volume. Save one half to be replanted in complete culture medium in a new 24 well plate. Spin the other half down and resuspend the cell pellet in the 50 microliter lysis buffer and protein degrader mixture included in the Invitrogen GCD kit. Transfer this into a PCR tube or PCR plate and load into a thermal cycler. Program following the specified parameters in the GCD kit manual. Next, mix an aliko of cell lysate with forward or reverse GCD primers at a stock concentration of 10 micromoles with a final of 0.3 to 1 micromole for each corresponding gRNA with the included polymerase and load into the thermal cycler. Verify the quality of your PCR products by running a 3 microliter sample on a 2% E-gel X-gel or a standard 2% Argarose gel with your choice of DNA staining agent. If a crisp single band of the expected amplicon size is observed, as you can see in our gel here, proceed to the next step. If no bands or weak smearing bands are observed, it may be that the PCR primers were not optimal for the target region or the PCR parameters need to be optimized. The next step of the GCD process is to denature and reanneal the PCR product DNA complexes to form heterogeneous DNA duplexes. Mix a sample of your amplified PCR product with the included reaction in a separate PCR tube and load into the thermal cycler. After these heterogeneous DNA complexes are formed, the final step is to mix in detection enzymes for the indels. Incubate the tubes at 37 degrees C for one hour on a thermal cycler. Then, immediately run the entire sample on a new 2% Argarose E-gel, X-gel or standard 2% Argarose gel with your staining agent of choice. Run a sizing standard such as a 1KB DNA ladder in parallel. For gels you prepare yourself, use loading buffer without dye to prevent interference with band intensity measurements. Finally, image your gel. As you can see with our gel, we have strong cleavage for the gRNAs and positive controls, and no cleavage for our negative control gRNAs. The presence of the two bands indicates indels formed when Cas9 was able to successfully cleave the DNA following transfection. The cleavage efficiency can be calculated using the GCD kit manual. If no cleavage is observed for your experimental samples, either transfection conditions weren't efficient for the cells, the cell health was compromised during the experiment, or the cell lysis was not complete. After GCD demonstrates efficient indel formation, the cells still in culture can be isolated and clonally expanded. Collect, then count the cells and resuspend them to a density of 8 cells per milliliter in 50 milliliters of complete growth medium and transfer to a sterile reservoir. Using a multi-channel pipetta, transfer 100 microliters of the cell suspension into each well of 96 well tissue culture plates until the desired number of plates is seeded. Make sure to mix cells in between seeding the plates to avoid formation of cell aggregates. 
In general, we recommend seeding 10 96 well plates to achieve a large number of clones. Single clones can be transferred to 24 well plates for further expansion. Upon cell expansion, small alicos of cells can be harvested for PCR amplification. Followed by Sangha or next generation sequencing for use in further experimentation. If you're interested in learning more about designing CRISPR gene editing experiments, be sure to check out the other videos in the series and reach out to your local Thermo Fisher technical specialist.